Throughout early church history, we read about many of the miracles that happened in the first temples of this dispensation. The Kirtland Temple received visitations from ancient prophets like Moses, Elias, and Elijah, as well as Jesus Christ himself. Nauvoo saw endowment ceremonies occurring for the first time in a temple, having over 6,000 saints receiving their endowment in a two-week period. The first temple in Utah, the St. George Temple, became no stranger to miraculous experiences either, with one of them involving many elect men and women that weren't ancient prophets, but people that played a vital part in the coming forth of the Restoration. One summer night, a few months after the temple's dedication, then temple president Wilford Woodruff had a vision. He recorded the event in his journal, quote, Before I left St. George, the spirits of the dead gathered around me, wanting to know why we did not redeem them. Said they, you have had the use of the endowment house for a number of years, and yet nothing has ever been done for us. We laid the foundation of the government you now enjoy, and we never apostatized from it. But we remained true to it and were faithful to God. These were the signers of the Declaration of Independence, and they waited on me for two days and two nights. I straightway went into the baptismal font and called upon Brother McAllister to baptize me for the signers of the Declaration of Independence and 50 other eminent men. I cannot understate in my mind how amazing this experience is to me, to see men of God who lived during the Great Apostasy rewarded for their endeavors to make the Restoration possible. But the questions still lie. Who exactly were these people? And why were they able to appear? Or better yet, what made them the elect and eminent of God? By simply reading American history, we know the feats and failures of our country's founding fathers and Declaration of Independence signers. These were imperfect men, but they were men of God. Recalling back to President Woodruff's journal entry, they remained true to and were faithful to God. And the Book of Doctrine and Covenants proves this. In section 101, the Lord states, and for this purpose have I established the constitution of this land, by the hands of wise men who I raised up unto this very purpose. Even Joseph Smith had respect for these great men. With all the turmoil the state governments placed upon the saints, Smith told the Missouri officials that the spirit of Old 76 in George Washington still lives. Among the people who were present that night were former presidents like John Adams and other declaration signers like Thomas Stone with George Washington and Benjamin Franklin also being ordained as high priests. Equally important, Wilford Woodruff later recorded that Martha Washington, the wife of George Washington, and 70 other eminent women of the world were also baptized, proving that the wives of these men and other noble children of God are women as well. In both of President Woodruff's journal entries so far, he mentions other people than just American icons. He uses the title of eminent to describe them. But who are these other eminent souls? Some were scientists, like Michael Faraday. Some explorers, like Amerigo Vespucci. Some writers, like Thomas Macaulay. Some politicians, like Benito Juarez. And some were reformers, like Martin Luther. It is also interesting to know that John Wesley and Christopher Columbus were also ordained as high priests. And you heard that right. Despite all the exaggerated false reports you hear about Columbus, the prophet Nephi in the Book of Mormon contradicts all of that by saying, I looked and beheld the Spirit of God that it came down and brought upon the man, and he went forth upon the many waters, even unto the seed of my brethren, who are in the promised land. Having people like these mighty souls emphasize that God still rose up brilliant elect men to carry out his purposes, whether through writing, scientific advancement, leadership, or motherhood. These eminent men went around doing good, even when much of God's light seemed to be lost. So next time you decide to pay attention in your history class, Try to look for the names of these people. When you do hear one, you can now look at him or her with a different perspective, knowing that they were of the elect of God, trying to do their best with what little and twisted truths of God and his church were available to them. For reference, I put a link in the description that forwards you to an article that contains many of the names of these men and women. President Woodruff's vision teaches us that God was always planning to bring about the restoration of Christ's church and gospel. He placed eminent men and women throughout history, and especially in the early United States, to push God's plan forward eventually allowing Joseph Smith to become the prophet of the Restoration. Imagine what would have happened had people like George Washington not been put on, on Earth. The good old U.S. of A. would not have won the Revolutionary War, 
and religious freedom would have not been allowed to exist for many more years to come. All in all, I think about this experience in the St. George Temple more often than your average BYU student, with it never ceasing to amaze me. And I profusely thank these great men and women for having the will and humility to be men of God and allowing God to restore Christ's lost truths that we enjoy today.